Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, today we're going to discuss you're a contractor, you're looking to buy a pickup truck. Which one do you choose, the Ford Lightning or the Tesla Cybertruck? So, before I even get started, I want to let everyone know yes, I like Tesla, own a Tesla Model X. I'm uh, online to get a Cybertruck. Uh, that being said, I have owned 14 cars in my life, uh, seven of them have been Fords. Three of them have been F-250s, and one of them now, uh, my favorite truck, which you can check out here in the comments section, um, I'll, I'll put a link there, is my F-450 dually truck camper with super singles. So anyway, I, I have a good perspective of these, of these things, uh, particularly since I've been in construction for about 30 years. So let's go through everything and see where we fall. Um, one thing I also want to make mention of, and I want you to keep in the back of your mind, is that there's a saying that says that the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. And this is true when it comes to EVs. And, and trust me, I've owned them for 10 years. And that is to say, a let's just say your, your electric car, it, it may work for you 99% of the time. Let's just say you stay local, you drive uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 miles a day. You come home, you charge, it's not a problem. However, ultimately, if once a month or once every two months you drive to the country to see your mom and dad or you have a business trip where it leads you further away, most people can't own two vehicles. So let's just assume it works most of the time. People will not buy a car unless it works all of the time. Uh, I'll give an example of this. I owned a BMW i3. Um, BMW actually came up with a with a a program where you would call them and they would lend you a car that could go three, four, five hundred miles when your when your i3 couldn't. So this isn't something new. Keep this in mind when I explain everything, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll make it the right decision. So first things first, we're gonna have to get rid of the gorilla uh, in the corner of the room, and that's range. Um, I posted a video a couple weeks ago regarding. Uh, the specifications between the Ford Lightning and the Cybertruck. And in the comments section, half of them, if there's a hundred of them, half of them are telling me how Ford, even though they claim 300 miles on the website, this is factually inaccurate and that the vehicle has a thousand pounds of payload and it can, and that's worst case scenario, and that this truck is getting easily somewhere in the ballpark of 460 miles uh, on, a, on, a, on a battery. Um, I'm here to tell you that there's something, the math does not make sense here, okay? So let me explain. Okay, so electric cars, the energy density of a battery compared to a uh, gas, it, they're not even in the same realm, okay? So gasoline has far more energy in it, in a gallon of gas than say the battery. So car, EV car manufacturers have had to deal with this and the way they do that is make cars very, um, the coefficient of drag is very low. So You'll notice they don't have mirrors or they're shaped to look um, aerodynamic and they try to reduce weight and size and all these things. Because, because the batteries aren't as capable, you have to um, do something else to counteract that. And Tesla and many other companies have done that extremely well, okay? The battery, some of the batteries from Tesla now are, are in the ballpark of 400 miles uh, on a battery. On a, I think ballpark of 100 kilowatt hour battery. Anyway. Because Ford, and I understand completely why, okay, Ford's base, Ford's Ford truck um, users want a truck that looks like a truck from the last hundred years, okay? So Ford has gone with the conventional square box looking truck like they've done forever. That's great. That's fine. I have nothing against it and I also understand why. But the problem is you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You can't have a truck that goes through the air like a brick and expect to have the same uh, range as, say, a Cybertruck will, especially when the battery capacity and capabilities of Tesla are far better. They've, they're coming out with a new battery that has the energy density five times better than what they currently have. The batteries are lighter, okay, and more capable. And let's face it, nothing against Ford, but Tesla has been doing this and working on it and perfecting it for 20 years, where unfortunately until the last two years, you know, Ford has been brought here kicking and screaming. You know, they don't, they don't want to go this direction. They, 
They sell a million pickup trucks uh, a year. They, they have perfected it. They do it very, very well. This is not what they wanted to be doing. But what I'm trying to say is you can't build a truck that looks like the old one and then expect it to go as far. It, it, it's, it can't happen. It's, it's, um, it's physics. Physics won't allow it. So I'm not sure what's currently going on here. They're saying 300 miles. The Internet's claiming 460. Either a couple things that can happen here. One, either Ford has to throw so many batteries at this truck that I can't even fathom the cost of what it would be. Okay, um, that's one option. The other option is they're just they're not telling the truth because it, it, it can't do that. So we're going to ultimately find out here. There's there's a great guy actually. If you want to learn more, I'll, I'll push you towards another um, expert on the internet. It's called Engineering Explained. He goes through. I'll put a link down in the comment section as well. He goes through all the reasons why um, EV cars are the way that they are and the coefficient of drag and when it comes to towing and other things. Uh, check it out. So I've said it once and I'll say it again. Range is the most important thing to any electric vehicle, uh, particularly when we're talking about pickup trucks. 300 miles in a car, perfectly fine. 300 miles in a pickup truck is not perfectly fine. When you add in all the potential for driving really fast, bad cold weather, um, steep hills, a payload, things in the in the bed that are sticking out causing even further wind drag so i won't we're going to come across this 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 topic is going to come up a couple times because the range affects other things that we're going to get into but i'll also add this to the factor which um sandy monroe who maybe you know who he is he's an uh, automotive engineer pretty world renowned breaks down vehicles of any type and size um claims says his opinion is that Tesla is about eight years ahead of any electric vehicle manufacturer in the world. So this has to be considered in the thought process when one manufacturer says we can do X in range and another one says they can do the Y in range. And ultimately, my guess is maybe there are, maybe 500 miles by the Tesla Cybertruck is inaccurate. Maybe the 300 miles in the Ford is inaccurate. But my guess is whatever they come out to, okay, it's not going to be even, okay? Tesla is going to outperform them significantly. So maybe it's not 500 miles. It's maybe it's 600 miles. Maybe Ford is 300, isn't 300 miles. Maybe they're four. But whatever it is, the gap is going to be the same or, or worse than I've imagined. All right, so we're done with range. So the, the battery itself can act like a generator. This is fantastic for both the Cybertruck and the Lightning. You're a contractor, framer, roofer, solar guy, plumber, whatever it is, right? The, the one thing is people are going to definitely use the truck or their generator needs will be different, vastly different from one to the other. Um, but, by sh but, per but for sure, having 120 or 240 volt uh, battery power at the job will make every contractor's life easier. Um, so I've tried to do some math here. To be honest with you, it's rather difficult because, again, are you, are you trying to use a, a welder? Are you trying to use an electric pump? Are you trying to charge batteries, right? You got DeWalt batteries in your, or a Milwaukee and you're just charging little handheld stuff. It's peanuts. Um, but if you're doing some significant things, which this truck will be used by vastly different contractors, um, in theory, it could get up there, I, su I, I suppose. So... Some basic math tells me that maybe you, you use, you know, five or 10 kilowatt hours for the day, okay? That's, that's nothing, okay? However, if it gets exceedingly higher than that, once again, sorry to bring up range, but we're entering this same problem. So I've driven a car where you're starting to worry about, am I gonna make it there or am I gonna get to the next charging station or whatever? Again, done this for 10 years. It, it doesn't happen a lot. The newer cars with bigger batteries, this happens far less. But the fact of the matter is, there's times in life where you're cutting it a little close. You're trying to get to a job. You have multiple projects in the same day. So it's bad enough to worry about driving down the road saying, well, geez, I'm going to have to back my speed down from 75 to 65 or to 50 so that I can get there with some assurance. Um, but do you want to be at the job site with your men, with your guys there working and 
Not only forget worrying about it when you're on the road, now you're worrying about it at the job site. Are we using too much power? Are they running the saws too much? Are they, is the welder on? Is the, are the water pumps on? Whatever you're using, okay? The last thing you want to be doing is worrying about getting there and worrying about using too much power on the site where now you can't get home. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is look, when you draw, I've driven long distances in electric cars. You're going down the highway, you're gonna hit out your two, 300 miles, stop for lunch and do that type of thing, go to a charging station. It's reasonably convenient because you're, you're, that's what you're doing for the day. You're traveling to Washington DC from New Jersey and you have this as part of your trip. It's not convenient to stop for a half hour, 45 minutes when you're a contractor, okay? Contractors may be bouncing around from jobs, you got guys in different positions, all of a sudden someone calls you with an emergency repair, you don't have the luxury of stopping for 45 minutes or if there's even a supercharging station near there to do this. So again, sorry to bring it up again, but range matters and it even matters when you're working at the job site. All right, so let's get into towing and payload. Um, I actually, after further, I mean, I went through just the specifications one after the other without that much in-depth conversation about it. Now we're going a little further into it, but towing probably isn't as big a deal as I was suggesting before. Cybertruck's doing 14,000, Lightning doing 10. You know, it gets to a point where the more and more and more you tow, am I towing, say it towed 100,000. Am I towing this? No. So what benefit am I getting from something that I didn't need in the first place? Um, however, I suppose for a certain segment of the population or contractors, if you are ultimately doing something unusual, putting some kind of, um, uh, I don't know, a, a boom, a crane, a, a heavy AC unit on a truck or something and you need to tow it and it's really, really heavy, this may uh, be a benefit to you to be able to do 14,000 versus 10. Um, payload, I think this is a bigger thing. Um, it's 1,800, I believe. It's, they say 2,000, but it actually goes lower in the, in, the, um, in the platinum model, okay? So it's 2,000 for the smaller, for the, for the less capable truck, and 1,800 in the, in, the, in the platinum. So anyway, the Tesla is 3,500. Big difference, okay? That's a big difference. You're throwing in bags of concrete or pallets of whatever it is. Um, it matters, and having a truck that's more comparable to a 250, 350, in my view, um, is very is a, a very good uh, um, add-on. Let's talk about seating. I think this is a big uh, difference, even though it seems like maybe it's just one guy, but that one guy can be a difference between having to put uh, two trucks on the road instead of one. And again, the landscaping always comes to mind where you got a good big group of guys and you drop them off at a site to work. Um, but there's, you know, again, I think I said framers too. Whenever you got a bunch of guys, if, if you can fit six in one truck and not have to take two, uh, that could be a big savings in, in maintenance and fuel costs and so forth. Um, the other thing I'll add to that, uh, when you have guys in the car, is full self-driving. Now, I know it's not officially uh, everywhere. Tesla has about 2,000 uh, vehicles on the road right now going through the process, but it's going to be here. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not in a month, maybe not a year, but it's going to be here. And look, let's face it. You have guys working who, one, don't have driver's licenses. Maybe they've lost their driver's license. You could have a vehicle where you drop two guys off here at one site and you drive over to the other and you're working there. And guess what? You can keep working. You could send the vehicle over to pick up these guys and save time. People who don't have driver's license could be in the vehicle. All these things have to be hammered out. Not saying it's happening tomorrow, but that is a technology that is so far advanced of what even Ford is even pondering and thinking about. In my view, it's huge. The mega frunk. I think this is Ford's biggest uh, claim to fame when it comes to the Ford Lightning. I think it's pretty cool. It's certainly big. Uh, they've traded, unfortunately, I would argue, they've traded um, uh, range for having a, a large trunk. Um, at the end of the day, if you add up all the storage of the Cybertruck versus the Ford, the Cybertruck has, still has more, right? The Cybertruck still has a frunk. We really don't know what technology or, or how uh, even or, or behind or whatever it is relative to the Ford, 
but it, it has one, has storage there. Um, it has storage on the side compartments of, of the angled beds. And it also has under the bed as well as in the bed. And that, that has a cover. So at the end of the day, total storage, um, the Cybertruck wins. Um, but I give credit where credit is due. The Ford, um, the Ford uh, Frunk is pretty cool. Speaking of the bed, um, once again, I think uh, the Cybertruck wins here. The Cybertruck has a cover for the, for the bed. Um, uh, just does a couple things. One, it protects anything you're putting in the back of the bed is protected. Doesn't blow away, doesn't get wet. It's actually, uh, it's rumored to be conditioned. So you have stuff in there, paint or whatever, whatever it is, some type of product that you caulk and you're gonna, and it's very cold outside. We all know you don't want, you want to keep caulk prior to using it at room temperature. So you can store and keep your, uh, uh, your stuff there, uh, prevent it from getting wet, temperature, uh, security, it's protected. Um, I think it's a great feature. Ford doesn't have it. Bed length, Tesla 6.5, uh, Ford Lightning 5.5. One foot difference. Is it the end all be all? No, but it's, it's still bigger if, you know, look, you can always run, have the tailgate down. You want to put eight footers on there, but the more bed space, if you're actually using a truck to carry things, to do work, more space is more space. And I'd rather have a six and a half foot bed than a five and a half. The compressor. Um, I'm not sure why Ford doesn't have this. That's, that would have seemed to me to be a no-brainer. Maybe they'll uh, come up with it in the future. But for now, Cybertruck has a compressor, comes with it. The, the Lightning does not. I mean, you can use this a million times. You know, uh, the biggest thing I could see is, you know, filling tires. The, the vehicle itself has a problem or lawn equipment or whatever, whatever you're using that needs air or if you want to even run tools, any pneumatic devices. It would seem to me having a compressor would be something you'd want to have that's important and something that's built into the truck. You don't have to carry it. Cybertruck has it. Ford does not. Road clearance. I, this is rather self-explanatory, I think. Um, the Tesla Cybertruck is 16 inches. The, the uh, road clearance on the Lightning is 8.9. Snow, um, sand, mud, wherever you are, the job site. I mean, we all know you go to a, a, a job site, the front yard, uh, while it's under construction is just a big muddy mess. You can get over things easier. Um, you know, the other nice thing about the Cybertruck is that you can control that height. So you're going down the highway, you can actually lower it to improve, uh, enter, uh, to improve um, range. Uh, but if you get to somewhere where it's really bad, you have to go through some gully, go through high water, you can raise it up. It seems like a no brainer to me. All right, the body of the vehicle. The Cybertruck is made out of stainless steel, doesn't need paint, and doesn't rust um, or get dents. Um, I can't even count the amount of times that I've seen vehicles get backed into, scratches, bangs, you name it, at the job site, uh, when everyone's pulling out and vans are parked all over the place. Um, furthermore, I've seen guys put lean equipment, lean material against the truck. It slides down and, and dense stuff. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. With a cyber truck, it's basically impervious to anything damaging the outside. It looks good. Uh, you know, there's nothing worse going to a job site when you have a truck that looks like it's been through World War III. You know, you're trying to set an image of, of fine quality and workmanship and you don't want your truck looking like Sanford and Son. Okay, so I think that's, I've laid out a good case as to why, if you haven't figured it out, why I think the Cybertruck is better than the Ford Lightning. But again, back to these videos I've done before, and the, the big major theme on these things are that it's hideous and it's ugly, and no one would show up at a, at a customer with this vehicle, and this, that, or the other thing. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but to me, it's the exact opposite. Um, you drive up at a job site, in your standard Ford pickup truck, no one's even going to know you're there. Okay, they won't even they they won't even notice. You show up at a job site in a cyber truck with the newest, latest, and greatest in technology. People spend thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing. What do you think that rolling stainless steel vehicle is? It tells you that you're into new technology, that you're doing well for yourself, that um, that you have a truck that's extremely capable. To me. Um, it's a benefit by, by a long shot. 
Um, at the end of the day, too, this is what I think a lot of four people don't understand, and maybe I can just get it because I I'm in the EV business already or have seen these vehicles. But the Tesla Cybertruck, yes, it is unusual looking. There's a reason for it. But ultimately, in another year or so, as more and more enter into the, f into the real world and people see them, they will not be so unusual and it will be accepted into society like every new technology. And at that point, they're going to recognize that why haven't I bought a vehicle that does more, it's more capable, it goes further, it leads in almost every spec, and it's cheaper. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you're a contractor and looking for which vehicle uh, you should buy, I, I think you know the direction I'm leaning in. Um, please like and subscribe and check out my other videos about the Cybertruck and other electric vehicle type things. Thank you so much.